recently I was diagnosed with a blood clot in my leg. So because I was sleeping in my car, so it's just, it's messed up. I just want to say like, <clears throat> that I've been dealing with so much with this man to where even from your little perverted comments too. Hold on, perverted comment? I have never touched that woman, said anything inappropriate to any, any tenant. Not what, no. Thank you. Thank you Zero tenant for her to sit here and lie. Well, what's, we'll hello, hello, you miss me? This you. courtroom is now at this time while we will consider the issues. Thank you. And the first issue is, should he have uh, sent her an itemized list of the reason or the basis for his failure to return the security deposit. Absolutely. And even if she may have failed to pay rent, which under the circumstances of the timing during the COVID relief program, she had there was a moratorium on payment of rent, it seems to me that he had the responsibility at least to explain to her, that's why I'm keeping your security deposit. He didn't do that. The issue of the mice infestation, I think he's fixated on this idea that somehow she caused the mice to come to her home. Mm -hmm. And showed no proof. Right. He showed no and proof showed of no that. Proof. And he also was fixated on the fact that she didn't pay rent for several months, which of course was during the COVID-19 moratorium. And so because of that, he was going to keep her deposit. So still, does it make sense? And doesn't even get that when you say that you caused the mice infestation, that, that's as much an attack on her yeah. as his claim that she's attacking me for being essentially uh, a, slumlord. a slumlord. Yeah, right. Slumlord. And look, when I read the complaint and the answer on this case, I was waiting to see the holes in the wall. Yeah. I was waiting to see whether this was something where somebody had just carved out a big circle in the middle of the wall and maybe this was the plaintiff's fault. She showed evidence that there were small holes in the wall underneath the sink. I think he took offense to the idea that his property could have been less than perfect. And because of that, simply adamantly denied that there was any issue. Yeah. And when the plaintiff texted him in October and said there are mice, instead of saying, well, let's solve the problem and then maybe right. figure out how it happened, he just said, no, there aren't, there are no holes. And two months later, when the housing authority came, Shut they found yeah. active infestation. So I think I would give her all of the expenses associated with the mice, except maybe the cat. I don't know. I'm oh, kind of on the fence about the that's cat. That's very interesting. <laughs> I well, think, some cats are better at catching mice than others, true. I, I think I, I think I asked her how'd it go, right? You bought the cat, did it work? I, but I, I think I we should give her that. everything that she actually spent to try to fix this issue. And so I would say we give her the full amount that she I had. agree with you. Okay, uh, I can get on board with the cat. Okay. <laughs> this courtroom is again in session. All right, I want to cut through all of the emotional discord that the both of you have shown during this hearing. There's something deeper here. There's, there's an anger. There's a feeling that I'm being accused of not having a clean home. There's a feeling that I'm being accused of not being a good landlord. And somehow this all got twisted. Mr. Pickett, you became very defensive when the plaintiff alleged that there were mice. You felt that that essentially was an insult, a reflection on you as a person, as opposed to a reality that she was facing. And we found it quite difficult for us to understand how you may not have seen that by your accusation that she caused the mice infestation because of the way she looked, that she wouldn't be insulted by that, especially when there is absolutely no evidence that you produced here that links the mice infestation to her behavior in any way. This is not just a tenant. This is a human being who's now forced to live in a car when we all go home to a nice warm bed, what do you think we're doing here? Do you think this is a game, that this is some kind of a comic show? Just imagine what it's like to have to sleep overnight in a car alone. Imagine. So we're not making judgments on who's a good landlord or a tenant, but we are making a judgment as to what is owed the plaintiff in this case based on what we heard. We believe the plaintiff lived in a premises where there were mice, and she was forced to pay expenses. You can shake your head all you like, but I'm not talking just to make wind here. And we believe that you should not have retained the $1,300 without giving her an explanation, without following the law to supply within 21 days an itemized list of the basis of your retaining plaintiff's security deposit. So the verdict is in favor of the plaintiff for the full amount 
that she asked for, which is $2,894.